All right, let's make your first Tinkercad drawing. Uh, we're gonna do a super simple wrench. So make sure that you've watched the intro to Tinkercad video and that you're assigned in Tinkercad and you're ready to rock. Uh, when you sign in, um, you're probably not gonna see any previous files or if you do, you still might wanna hit create new design. I'm gonna uh, click actually on our super simple wrench though and click on Tinker This um, just so we have the wrench, the finished copy up on the screen uh, for us to copy. So there it is right there, super simple wrench. Calling it a super simple wrench because, yeah, it's not exactly an honest to gosh uh, combination wrench. True combination wrench looks something like this, right? And we'd have all these little points on the box end and on the open end. We'd have the perfect geometry for cranking on some nuts and bolts. Uh, but what we're trying to do in this uh, uh, screencast here is just get you more comfortable with Tinkercad uh, using some standard primitive shapes uh, to build something. All right, so. Forgive me if it's not a perfect combination wrench, but it's a good first project for us. I'm gonna take our finished copy. I'm just gonna click on it and kind of drag it off up to the top of the work plane, just so we can see it, but it is out of the way. Now, to start doing a drawing like this, like most drawings, we wanna break it down into uh, smaller pieces, right? It's component parts. And when I look at this uh, finished copy, I see a circle, or actually a couple of circles that make a cylinder. The main body of the wrench here, the handle part, is just a, a big old long box. And then the open end of our combination wrench, that's yeah, again, it's a cylinder, and it's got this funky kind of polygon shape cut out of it. Right? So I see three different parts. Let's start on the back end here with the closed part of the combination wrench, and we're gonna do a couple cylinders. So I will click on the cylinder over here in the shapes panel and bring in a cylinder. Remember, whenever you bring in a piece, you can always uh, click on these little gray handles and that will allow you to adjust its size. Uh, the size for this one, let's go for a 25 uh, millimeter diameter. Um, so I'll click on one of the little gray handles and I could click and just kind of pull it out, but I much prefer clicking on the little gray um, uh, handle, handlebar, and then typing in 25 and 25. It's just a little easier to get a nice accurate number in there. And then for the height, to adjust the height, I will click on the gray handlebar that's at the top of the cylinder. I'll click on that one. And then in the number field, I will type four. So we're gonna go for a 25 millimeter diameter circle with a four millimeter height. All right, so now I have my cylinder. I gotta cut a big old hole in the middle of that. To do that, I'm gonna grab another cylinder and bring it in. I'm gonna make this cylinder just a little bit smaller than our 25 millimeter circle. Uh, so I'll click on that little gray handlebar. And actually this one is 20 millimeters uh, diameter already. I think that's gonna be just perfect. So I am not going to change that at all. And actually for this next move, I don't even need to change the height. So the height is at 20 millimeters. I'll just leave that um, the same. All right, the change I need to make with this one is right now it is a solid shape. I need to change this into a hole. Um, to do that, I have to have it selected. Right? Remember when you have it selected, you can see the little gray handlebars. There's a little blue outline kind of glowing around our shape. And then up here in the shape menu, I have solid and I have hole. I'm gonna click on hole. And notice it gets kind of grayed out. All right, the magic's gonna happen here in a second where we're actually gonna use this to make a hole in this solid over here. First though, I wanna get them lined up. I could just click on uh, the cylinder that I made a hole and you know, do my best to kind of get it in the center, but honestly, it's going to be impossible to get it just right, or it'll be very, very hard to get it just right. It is much faster if we use the align command. Um, to use the align command, I have to have at least two objects selected. I could do that by selecting one, holding down shift, and selecting the other. Another way you can do it is dragging a big old box over whatever you want to select and you'll see kind of this blue uh, glowing um, uh, rectangle that's around all the objects that you have selected and the outline of each shape has that same kind of blue uh, glowing outline to it. All right, so now I have them both selected and then up here in the top right, I have my group and align commands. I'm gonna click on align and when I do that, I get these uh, these little gray guides, I'm sorry, these little black guides. And when you hover over them, it gives you a little preview of how it will align. So this uh, uh, black guide down here on the bottom is going to align it on that X axis. So if I click there, they're perfectly kind of straight up and down. But if I orbit around, I can see, eh, it's, you know, it's not quite perfect, um, uh, you know, up and down on the Y axis. So I will click on the 
on the the black guide the little dot that's on the side of the object and now that i did that on the uh, y and on the x-axis it's lined up perfectly and i know that my uh, two cylinders are, are perfectly centered on each other now i got to make sure that i have both of these things selected so i'll drag a little box out i got them both selected and then i will hit the group command up here in the top right and when you group a solid and a hole, the hole will cut itself out of the solid. And what do you know? I'm left with a cool little cylinder that looks very much like my finished piece. All right, I'm just going to pull that off to the side for right now. And I'll get to work on the handle of this wrench. The handle is pretty simple. It's just a box. So I'll click on the box over here in the basic shapes uh, panel and bring it in. And I'm doing this orbit and all the zooming and stuff using the mouse tools that I showed you in the intro to Tinkercad video. So make sure you check that one out if you're not sure how to move around in Tinkercad. All right, now I will click on the uh, little gray handlebars down there, and I want to change some sizes. So I'm going to make this uh, guy 10 millimeters uh, wide. I'm going to go for 100 in the length. And then I want to make it the same four millimeter height as that first part that I was working on. So four millimeters for the height. And that's all it is for the handle. I'll just drag that kind of close for right now. And then I'll work on the hardest part of our very simple wrench. Got to do the front end, the open end of this combination wrench. It's going to start with the cylinder. And then I just got to do a little bit of a funky cut there. I'll do a little bit of rotating too to make it just right. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a cylinder. This one I want to be a little bit bigger uh, than the back end um, uh, part, so I'm going to click on the little gray handlebar, and I'm going to make this one 30. So it's a 30 millimeter diameter cylinder. but I want to keep that same four millimeter height. So I'll click on the handlebar at the very top and type in four. And right. now I need to get um, uh, this kind of funky polygon shape up there. All right, so I'm looking around, I got boxes and spheres and scribbles and roofs and a bunch of different things. But if I scroll down a little bit, I think I'm gonna find it. There it is, polygon. So I'm gonna drag in a polygon and trust me on this one, uh, you'll see why in just a second, if I rotate it uh, 90 degrees, it's going to uh, give me the point in the right direction. So I want to rotate this guy. I'm using this little curved arrow down here. So I'll click on the curved arrow and I can just grab it and turn it or I can type in a number. I'll type in 90 for 90 degrees. And now it's rotated 90 degrees. And I did that so that the point would be facing in just the right direction. All right, to make this next move a little bit easier, I'm going to come up here to the view, to, uh, view cube, and I'm going to click top. It's going to give me a perfect top-down perspective of my drawing. And I'm going to drag my little blue uh, polygon kind of over here, close to where I want it to go. Oh, but I forgot to change uh, a few numbers here. I forgot to change the sizes of this thing. Um, so I'm going to click on my little gray handlebar. And I think this one, I'm going to make it 15 millimeters by 32 millimeters. I'm just going to kind of drag it roughly where I want it to go. But I don't want it to just be roughly there. I want to make sure that it's aligned perfectly on the center. So I will select both of these parts. Come up to my align command. And then I'm going to click uh, the uh, black guide there. And that will align it perfectly uh, up and down uh, in this view. All right, I'm going to rotate a little bit here so we can see where we're at. All right, that's looking looking pretty good. Um, I think that will work for our relatively simple wrench that we're working on. Um, so then the next move I need to do is the, um, uh, the, the hole. I need to cut out the hole. So I will select my purple polygon and change it from a solid to a hole. And then when I select both of these parts and hit group, the hole will be subtracted um, from the solid. 
All right, one last little uh, trick here to make it look a little extra cool. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. That's how a normal combination wrench is set up. So I'm going to uh, grab my new shape and just kick it off to the side. This time I'm even just going to pull it over to, I don't know, where am I going? About 24 degrees or so, somewhere in that ballpark. Looks good. All right. Now I have all of my component pieces. I'm going to drag them kind of close to each other. I just need to put this thing together. I'm going to have a very cool, super simple wrench. And again, I think I'll make this move uh, from the top. So I'll click on the top on the view cube. And then I just want to make these things touch just a little bit. So I could grab it and move it over with my mouse. Or I can use my arrow keys as well. And right now I'm not really worrying about how it looks uh, up and down. I'm more just trying to get it uh, um, touching in the left and right direction. All right. And then I will select them all. And since I know how to align, I know it would be quick and easy to make this thing look all perfect and straight in a line. So I will hit align and hit that little black guide there. And now that's looking pretty darn sweet. I'll take it. All right, I'm going to select everything now. And since it's still three different parts, I'm going to group them together. And there we go. I have an amazing, awesome orange wrench. Now, if orange, if orange wrenches are not your thing, you want to change the color, it's pretty easy. Just uh, make sure you have your object selected. Come up here to where it says solid, and you'll see the big orange circle. We click on that, and we get a nice little color palette um, displayed for us. I'm going to switch this over to gray, and there you go. I have a super simple, not quite classic uh, combination wrench. Um, but what's cool about this, I could save this as a STL file, send it over to the 3D printer, and you know, pretty quickly I'd have a cool little plastic wrench to play with. Now, if that seemed too easy for you and you're ready for the next level, see if you could uh, uh, make the uh, closed part of this combination wrench have all the points that an actual functioning combination wrench would have, and see if you could look at some pictures and see exactly what that open end is supposed to look like, and using your standard primitives over here, uh, try to make it perfect. Another little trick that you could do is add your name to the handle of the uh, combination wrench by using the text tool. All right, when you get it all looking perfect, save it by going up to Send To. Click the little Download button. And now it's downloaded. I can see it down there on the bottom of my screen. And put it up on your weekly blog.